In this video, let's learn how to deal with TypeScript and the use context hook with a future value. For this example, I have created a new file in the context folder. The file name is user.tsx and is very similar to the component we looked at when learning about the use state hook. Let me quickly go over this component code. In the JSX, we have two buttons, login and log out, whose handlers are to be defined. We also have div tags, which are supposed to render the logged in user's name and email address. I've also created a second file, which is usercontext.tsx. At the moment, it only contains the type of the authenticated user. It is an object with name and email as string values. Let us now finish the user context code and understand how to make it work with TypeScript. Step one, we create a new context. So at the top, import create context from React. Then we create and export a context to manage a user in our application. So export const user context is equal to create context. And the initial value is null since we don't know what is the value of this context outside a component. Now that we have the context, step two is to create the component that provides the user context value. So let's begin with the prop type. Type user context provider props, and this will be one prop which is children of type react.reactNode. Next, we define the provider component. So after the create context call, we define the component. Export const user context provider is equal to an arrow function. And from the props, we destructure children. And the type of props is user context provider props. Now, Let's think about what this component is supposed to do. Typically, a user context is for managing the authenticated state of the user. In simpler words, a user should be able to log in and log out of your application. If they're logged in, the context should hold user information like name, email address, user ID, etc. For our example, we want the context to provide a function which can be used to log in and log out as well as an object that is of type auth user if they are logged in. So for the first part of this provider component, we are going to maintain a user state whose value will be null if the user is logged out and will be an object if the user is logged in. We've already learned how to type the use state hook in one of the earlier videos. So let's dive straight into this. At the top, import use state from React. And then within the context provider component, invoke use state. Let's call the state variable user, the setter function as set user, and the initial value is null. A user is logged out to begin with and hence null as the initial value. However, we also know that in the future, the user could log in and the value can be an object of type auth user. So let's make use of the union type to specify that. Use state, angle brackets, the type is auth user or null. Next, we return children wrapping it with the context provider. So return user context dot provider. We pass in the children prop. We now see our first context API related TypeScript error. Property value is missing, but required. 
So we need to pass in the value prop to this context provider. And if you remember, I mentioned we want to provide the logged in user and the function to set the user when they log in or log out, which is pretty much what use state returns in our case. So value is going to be an object where we set user set to user and set user, which is set to set user. I have used the ES6 shorthand syntax. When we do this, we get another error. Type user of auth user or null and set user of type react.dispatch is not assignable to type null. So TypeScript is basically telling us, hey, you told me that context value is null on line 12 when you created the context. However, we are now trying to pass in an object as the value. I cannot allow that. So for our step three, we need to specify the type for our context value. So type user context type is an object with two properties. The first one is user and we already know what a user can be if we refer to the use state call either auth user or null. The second property is set user, which would be the type of the set user function. And what would that be? Well, we just hover on set user and copy what VS Code tells us it is. So copy and paste. I recommend you do this whenever possible saves you a lot of time. All right, now that we have the context type, we mention it when creating the context. Hey TypeScript, the context type will be null initially. However, in the future, it could be user context type. So user context type or null. And when we do that, you can see our red squiggly for value is gone. TypeScript is happy once again. For step four, let's wrap our user component with user context provider. In app.tsx, at the top, import both the components from their respective files. So user context provider from user context. So this component right here. And the user component from user.tsx. This component right here. In the JSX, user context provider, and we wrap the user component. For our fifth and final step, we make use of the context in user.tsx. At the top, import use context from React, and also import user context from dot slash user context within the function body const user context is equal to use context pass in user context then within handle login if user context user context dot set user we're going to hard code a user object name is vishwas and email is vishwas at example.com. Similarly, inside handle logout, if user context exists, user context dot set user, we pass in null. In the JSX, username now is user context dot user dot name and user email is user context dot user dot email and that should do it let's test this out in the browser click on login and we see name and email log out and we don't see it anymore our user context works as expected
Now there is one detail that we can improve in this example. At the moment, you can see that we have to check if user context exists every time we need to use its value. So if user context, if user context, and optional chaining with user context. This is because we specify null as the initial value. What we can do instead is use type assertion again. So when creating context, the initial value is an empty object as user context type. This will allow us to get rid of the null check against user context. This is a pretty common thing to do when working with TypeScript and the context API. If you think about it, a context always has to be created outside the component, whereas its future value will always be set inside a component. So there is that gap that needs to be plugged in and type assertion is how you do it. All right, I hope you now have an idea of how to use the context API with TypeScript. Thank you all for watching. Please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you're enjoying the content. I'll see you in the next video.